Greetings. Thank you for worshiping with West Los Angeles United Methodist Church. As we begin our service, please join me in the responsive call to worship. God is in our midst, forming us to be God's own people. Though the way may be difficult, God will be with us. We need not fear. In the Lord, we will take our refuge for God is our strength. Come to the Lord, who will surround you with God's own righteousness. Lord, open our hearts and our spirits so that we may faithfully follow you. Amen. Let us pray. We gather this day, O Lord, as people who seek your guiding love. Open our hearts and make us ready to stand firm in the faith that leads us, that leads to loving service. Create a new people in this place so that your love may surround all who enter here. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello and welcome. Right now I want to invite all the children for this week's children's message. So guys, you know a long time ago, people when they went on a trip or a journey, they would use maps to help find the way. Mm -hmm. 
but not like the maps we use. Like kind of like these maps. No, like the ones you hold. Yeah, and like there used to be this book called the Thomas Guide, and it would have all the streets and addresses, and you could find your way through that. Or sometimes you would have to call your friend and say, get directions, turn right here, turn left there. But nowadays, what do we use, Hazel? Google Maps. Okay, Google Maps or Apple Maps or um, a car navigation, right? Yeah. And um, what usually happens? What's Google Maps? How do you use it? Um, it tells you where to go and it shows you where you are, like if you were driving in your car and you got off track and you like took a wrong turn, it will just change the directions for you to help you still get where you're supposed to go. That's right. And all you have to do is just type in the address. Right, super easy, right? You just type in the address. Easier than it And easier. then you tells you where to go, right? Uh-huh. And like Hazel said, when um, you make a mistake and you miss a turn, what happens, Hazel? It changes directions so you still can get to the place where you're going. Yeah, so even if you make a mistake, it gets you back on the right track, right? Mm -hmm. And you know what else Google Maps or Apple Maps or even Waze does? If there's a problem on the road, like construction or traffic, it'll help you avoid that road so you don't have to go through it. Isn't that super nice? Yeah. Uh -huh. So that you could have smooth sailing. Well, guess what, guys? When we, as Christians, are trying to follow Jesus in our lives, it would be nice to have Google Maps lead us in the right direction and just listen right? to whatever it told us, right? It would keep us on the right path and keep us from getting lost. Wouldn't it be great if it like, helped us avoid troubles in life? Like, oh, don't go that way. It might be trouble over there. Or it would be nice if the Google Maps, as we're trying to live our lives, mm -hmm. get us back on the right track if we made yeah. a wrong decision. Sometimes we make mistakes, right, guys, in life? Mm-hmm. Well, what, I think that Jesus' disciples, he told them that he was going to leave them, and they felt lost. They were probably thinking, oh, I wish I had Google Maps, huh? Uh-huh. Uh, Let's open our Bibles. In our Bibles, in the book of John, chapter 14, Jesus tells his oh, disciples that he's leaving them, okay? And they're like, oh, no, oh, no. They feel lost, okay? Mm-hmm. So Jesus says, I am going to prepare a place for you. And when everything is ready, I will come get you so that you can always be with me. You know the way to where I'm going. And one of his disciples, Thomas, we know a lot of Thomases. Yeah. He answered, no, we don't, Lord. We don't know the way. How can we go if you don't tell us where you're going? And how do, do we know the way? And Jesus answered him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Oh, wow. Jesus said that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, no one can come to the Father except through me. Then another disciple, Philip, joined in, and he said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Philip, Jesus answered, have you been with me all this time and you still don't know who I am? What is he saying to Philip, Dylan? Mm. He's like, aren't you listening to me? Uh-huh. He's saying, why are you asking me to show you the Father? Anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. Just believe that I am the, in the Father and the Father is in me. Anyone who believes in me will do the same things that I have done. So that's what the disciples needed to know to get them on the right path to the Father. 
How about us? How do you think we can stay on the right path? We can't just ask Jesus like Thomas and Philip did. Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life. How can we follow Jesus? Uh, We could read the Bible. That's right. Jesus said that anyone who believes in me will do the same things that I have done. So we want to do things just like Jesus did. You know, what are some things that we can do that Jesus did? And where do we find those examples? In the Bible. We have our Bible. God's holy word is our Google Maps that will keep us on the right path. You want to pray, Dylan? Okay. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to provide the way to eternal life. Thank you for your holy word, which will keep us on the right path in our journey throughout life. We pray in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hear now the word of God from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. 
How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does this work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, how many of you remember what a Thomas, Thomas guide is? Raise your hand. Here is a photo of a Thomas guide. Those of you who used to drive in that pre-GPS global positioning system era, you well know that it was this really thick printed mapping manual that would help you figure out where you were going, how to get to your intended destination. There was a Thomas guide that you could purchase for just about any county in our nation, right? You had to map out your route with the help of the Thomas guide and maybe keep pulling over to the side of the road to see where you were and where you needed to go next. Do you remember flipping through the pages onto the next grid map to view the next section of the roadway to your destination? Friends, how did we manage to do that? In light of the fact that we now have GPS capabilities, when you think about it now, as convenient and as helpful as that was in ages past, how difficult it was in light of today's technology. Can I dare ask, how many of you are still using a Thomas Guide today? I was actually dumbfounded to realize that you can still buy a Thomas Guide. There is definitely an updated 2022 LA County version that you can buy. Did you know that? I thought those days of the Thomas Guide were long gone when GPS units came out and became even more accessible when it was a standard component, component of our smartphones. I think to myself that if ever the World Wide Web shuts down, we'd all be lost without our smartphones and GPS capabilities. It's a scary thought when you think about it. <clears throat> Friends, Finding your way on the roadways to get to a particular destination can indeed be a harrowing experience. You sometimes hear about those persons or families who get lost out on a mountain in the snow or in the middle of a desert and they become stranded to meet some dire consequence. How many of you have, had such, have been in such a panicked situation, lost, and you don't know your way? I remember when I was a young college student, and for some reason, I can't remember now, I was giving Reverend Grant Hagia and his wife, Jannie, a ride back from San Jose to LA. That was a most troubling drive. For one, the weather was absolutely the worst. Pouring rain that caused visibility at the night to be terrifying and near impossible, like as if buckets of water being poured constantly on your windshield. That night driving back to LA, we saw many accidents on Highway 5, backing up traffic for hours that literally caused traffic to come to a standstill for much of it. As I recall, the normal six-hour drive lasted somewhere around eight to 10 hours, if I remember correctly. And once in LA County, the traffic was still so bad that I tried getting off the freeway to take the streets. And because of how much the rain was limiting visibility, we ended up turning on onto a railroad track. When I realized that I was on a railroad track, we were horrified at the danger of it all. It was a miracle that we got home that night or early in the dark the next morning before dawn. 
being lost and not knowing where one is on the road is indeed troubling. But it can be even more troubling when one is having a hard time finding one's way on the road of life. Our gospel lectionary reading indeed lifts up this very troubling situation. The disciples and followers of Jesus are deeply troubled in heart, and the gospel writer of the book of John conveys that Jesus understood their troubled and anxious hearts. Here they encounter the resurrected Jesus, and yet they sense that he will not stay with him, that he intends to move on, and it causes his disciples and followers a high degree of anxiety. And so it prompted Jesus to convey those words of assurance. He said, believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, in our holy parents' house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. Then Jesus says a most curious tag to those words. He adds, And you know the way to the place where I am going. It's almost as if Jesus intentionally and craftily was drawing them into a deeper discussion on the matter. And immediately these words seem to strike more panic in the disciple Thomas, who says to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Thomas is like a child thrown into a swimming pool and desperately wanting to find where his or her parents are so that he can frantically and ferociously paddle to them for safety to cling to. To rely on Jesus as their strength and guide throughout their ministry together and then now realizing that they will no longer have Jesus physically present with them as they continue the journey without him was indeed quite fearful, frightful indeed. It becomes very clear that Thomas may very well be thinking about the journeying to a specific place where they will be together with Jesus and so he is thinking about wanting to know the way or the steps to heaven where Jesus will be with them and with God. He is, it is here where Jesus, according to the Gospel of John, states one of his famous seven I am statements about himself. He says to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know our holy God, the parent also. From now on, you do know God, and you have seen God. If the Gospel writer of John purports that if you know Jesus, then you know God, the holy parent, because they are one and the same. These two are always bound together as one, and it can be for them as well. Jesus and his disciples bound together in unity. But here is where the other disciples, a disciple Philip, jumps into the conversation as he too is confused. Philip wants it spelled out more clearly based on what he is hearing from Jesus so he says to Jesus, Master, show us the, the Father, the Holy Parent God, and we will be satisfied. Jesus seems to become disappointed at Philip's words, and it causes Jesus to say, Have I not been with you this whole time, Philip, and you still don't know me? When you see me and you see the works that I do, it is the work of the Holy Parent God. We are one and the same. Jesus tries to help them understand that he is the tangible human reflection of the very character and nature of God. And because they are one, the place where Jesus is and will be is always with God. It is a present reality and a future reality. It is the connection we all can have with both Jesus the Christ and God the parent at all times. 
And then when this earthly life comes to an end for any of us, it is where we will also be. Again, I say, I believe Jesus was telling the disciples that where he is going is always where he has been and will be. Strangely, if you are fascinated by time theories, linear time versus non-linear time theory in specific, this concept came to mind as I reread Jesus' conversation with his disciples. That union with him and God is not just a future reality, but always a present one as well at the same time. It's kind of what I believe this past Academy Award-winning film, Everything Everywhere All at Once, is based on, which may have been a bizarre, incomprehensible film, incomprehensible film to many if you were hoping for a linear progression to a plot. But enough said of that. Talk to me later if that thought intrigues you. You see, in every moment that Jesus spent with his disciples and followers, he had shown them the way. The way is a state and a way of living, deeply connected and in harmony with the love and grace of God. Jesus seems to be saying that we will know we have found the way when our life, our action, and words are one with God's own will and hope. And therefore, we are with God, and we are with Christ whenever we have the deep spiritual connectedness. Then Jesus says an even more curious and startling thing. He proclaims that his, his disciples and followers will do even greater things than what people have seen him do. This is where I believe, even here in the Gospel of John, that Jesus seeks to encourage and celebrate the great potential that each of us can aspire to be and to do. He seems to say that when we are truly in sync and in connection with God and him, there is an elevation and expansiveness of what we are capable of doing in the world. Christ believes in his disciples and followers. He believes in us to be redeeming hope, even in the darkness and amidst the tribulation and chaos of the world. If we are only focused on being with Jesus in a place, a room in the hereafter, then we are missing the great opportunity to be one with Jesus and our holy parent God in this very moment. The disciples were anxious to know about the future, but Jesus was attempting to bring them back to the way that he had shown them that they could live out here and now, which is where he and God are still present with them. Jesus has already shown Thomas and Philip and all the other disciples and the followers, he has shown them the way. They and we just perhaps need to acknowledge it, believe it, live it. It's the place where we are one with Christ and one with God and one with the Spirit and one with the world. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 15, May those who have ears let them hear. Amen. Friends, let us pray together. Merciful God, we, like your disciples Thomas and Philip, we often find ourselves overwhelmed by our own worries, that we often miss your holy presence with us in each moment, which can give us the assurance, peace, strength, and hope if we would but have the eyes to see your presence and the ears to hear your messages of comfort, encouragement, and hope. Through Christ, we are reminded that Christ goes before us to prepare a place for us in your eternal realm. But help us to know and realize that we can have an at-homeness with you in every moment of our living that can help us fall not to anguish and despair. Help us to grow in such connection and unity to you that every word we speak and every action we take that it might be a deep expression of your will and way. Help us to share your good news through witnessing to your word, through acts of compassion, reconciliation, forgiveness, and mercy. Comfort us in our every trial and hardship experienced 
and build us up in hope, O God. Please provide your peace and healing to all who are facing illness and health concerns. We thank you, O God, for the abundant joys and blessings that you bestow upon each of us. We pray for your healing and unity to our nation and world, where there is much division, conflict, war, social injustice, and turmoil. Use us, O God, for vessels of transformation and change that can create positive change in the world. You have indeed shown us the way through Jesus Christ. May we be faithful to you in every way. In Christ we pray. Amen. Continuing in prayer, now hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, hear now these words of benediction. Go forth in peace. Bring hope to this world. Go forth in love. Bring joy to this world. Go forth in the knowledge that God goes with you. 
loving and guiding your every step. Amen. Thank you.